Okay, so the journey continues and we're here still in Newcastle and we're going to be talking to more artists. So here's another one. Please introduce yourself. All right, um, I'm Dave, also known as, known as A Thousand Eyes, also known as Summick. <laughs> I'm just here today, like getting involved, getting in the mix, meeting up with people, enjoying myself, getting, getting stuff done, putting out something for the community. I have a request. Many years ago when I was doing shows, one time I did a show and they were supporting Eminem and I went in the crowd and I got everybody to spray, to, to write their names on me, right? So my body, my t-shirt, my jeans, everything. So I had tags everywhere with, instead of me giving autographs, they were signing me. So could you please spray me? Oh no, really? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that man, this man's my idol. <laughs> well, so All right, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh uh, well, I've been uh, in the, in the mix, getting involved with like hip hop and graffiti and that for a long time. This man, Mustaglio, <laughs> like, painted years ago, back in the day, and that like so. Yeah, we've just been getting involved with things and that since I was a youngin. My sister's a couple of years older than me and she was like knocking about with all the writers and that. They would come around my house showing us stuff and I love doing art and that. But you know, like at the same time, it was just like, all oh, right, well, let's put some on the streets. So here we're gone. You want to explain what you're doing at that point? Yeah, so what I'm doing here, what we're, what we're doing is I put on like all the like the dark colour on first to try and give a bit of definition to like the shape and the structure of it. So it's almost like three dimensional. So I suppose if we think that the light's coming down like this this way and it's casting these darker shadows like over the top of this, it'll become more pronounced once the outline and things are on and then we've got more like tonal values like in there. But the technique is basically, you know, like get this like marked up and that's so we can see what it is that we're doing. Put all the shadow work in, put all the shadow work in, then do all the light work and that light back over the top. Okay. So what's your um what is the finished product in your mind gonna look like? Oh well what are, let's what are have you a look. Painting? I did, a little, I did a little doodle like last night. So there's kind of what we're going towards so you can see. Well, you know, the colours aren't exactly the same, but you can get a general idea of where it is that we're going. Background will just be made up right when I get to that point. You, you said you said the colours aren't exactly the same. Yeah. Is it, does, the, does having a background a certain colour help that? Yeah, well, this is it. So, like, what we've got, like, here, we've got, like, high contrast and colours and that, like, but what we'll do is we'll put the yellow, put yellow into the background, yellow and orange, which is a contrast in colours to so these kind of bluey purples and the pinks, which will then just, like, lift the mural, like, out. It'll make it really pop, like, at the end. Okay. But I'm always scared of doing the background. That's where it could all go wrong. Okay. <laughs> and, and what is, what do you consider to be your forte? abstraction abstraction and like uh, like organic shapes you know that's okay. a kind of like i suppose first starting out with graffiti like in the late 80s everything was dead angular and loads of arrows and stuff and i always thought that like when i was trying to project that out of my mind onto the wall I found it always like really difficult so it took a while i think it's just comes with age get a little bit more confident in myself and go the mistakes aren't mistakes it's just a natural way of working so see that it's so organic the structures that are going on you can't really go wrong with it it's just kind of ad-libbing and always having that element of like freestyle like in there you know not sticking too tight in the drawing you know trying to get a bit of free flow like in there as well because keep picking the outline up and then doing a bit and picking it up and doing it up you know just try and project what's in your head mixed with what you've got down on paper okay. and kind of try and find the balance in between okay. so what's in your head oh I'd I just want to know how weird it is. What's going on up there? Uh, you know, like, I, I mean, like, I love David Cronenberg films. Like, I love entomology, like, study of insects. I really like the shapes in natural forms and that, like, that you find in, like, mushrooms and fungus and coral. So I always try and incorporate that, like, back into the work so you can okay. see that there's kind of elements of those kind of pieces which are picked out from nature, you know? Nature has got the best natural form, so why are we trying to do our own? Let's mimic what's out there. Mm. Okay, and uh, what is your 
favorite piece that you've ever done? Is there oh. something specific that you remember and how it came about? Crikey, uh, well, a long, well, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. It's probably got the most exposure though, which I was really chuffed about a long time ago. Can you, uh, explain, can you explain that? Like, because I've been in a place where I've had something have the most exposure, but it's not necessarily my favorite thing. Because, I get it. Yeah, but for anyone who might because it that. wasn't for me, it was for a client. Okay. So uh, I got approached by the ad agency, which was doing the adverts for the PT Cruiser uh, for Chrysler and then asked us to paint the whole side of a building and then park their cars in front of it so these were like billboards all over the country which was amazing for me and i was so chuffed like about it but did it really represent me no it was it was for them but it was a big buzz and that so, like from it so how many how many of these billboards were out there do you, do you have any idea oh, how, how that across the country was yeah. maybe a couple of hundred across the country um, so i had like they were all over newcastle and that night and there was loads of chit chatter about it because i was I was quite involved in writing when I was younger, but as I got older and I got into more trouble, it kind of went on the back burner, you know? And then all of a sudden, because I was like working, working doing illustration stuff, I got approached doing it, not for being a graffiti artist, but for being an illustrator. And then it just, things kind of came back round. So once I got back on that again, it kind of sparked something again for us to get back on the horse and then just start going, right, let's do a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. I'm, I'm not prolific. I do a couple of pieces every every year now, uh, but you know it's kind of one of those things like once bitten, you know, like with it, it's just it becomes an addiction that you just can't shake. Define the difference between a graffiti artist and an illustrator. Well, it's always trying to like I, I suppose like with uh, doing graffiti, group doing graffiti is representation and identity and being able to put your mark out there. Doing an illustration, I mean. It, part of that because we're kind of drifting away from doing letters and illustration and then maybe make, working more with imagery it's all about the communication and how you're trying to communicate to a different audience um you know so we've got like you know different for different audiences that want different sorts of visuals which are in there you know so it's kind of it's a, it's a very different thing but utilizes a lot of the same sort of principles and the same skills skill set which is in there i mean ultimately we're on about communication here and this is what i'm communicating this is this is about me this is this is what i do you know so you know i asked you earlier what your forte is what i was hoping to find out was was it illustrations was it lettering was you know oh, crazy characters probably like i mean i'm not doing like letters like today but most of the work which I've done is always like involved like some sort of like character or creature or monster you know like which is in there because we've always felt like I've got loads of mates who are really strong at doing letterings but kind of I suppose like like doing characters is a, is a little bit of a different thing which is kind of going on there so what I ended up finding was when I was getting back into it was that uh, you know my mates were doing pieces and I would come down and have a look and they would go oh Dave there's a spot here in between the pieces put something in there so I suppose at that time as I'm slowly getting into it my mates are drip feeding us like little bits to try and encourage us to get back on the horse like with it you know so start off little infillers and then bigger and bigger and bigger and then it's like oh here's your own spot do it if I had a request for you to do a creature and a monster on one of your pieces would you do that for me yeah of course I okay would, cool like find a spare piece of wall and do a, do a painting of me please <laughs> a little blade in the corner <laughs> i'm sure we could do something <laughs> creature monster ah, yeah. exactly um so when when you did the thing with chrysler what did that exposure do for you oh like because i thought i thought here yeah, like i'm gonna it's gonna be taken off like from here but almost like the kind of almost like the reverse happened i got so much exposure about it that a load of people who i'd worked for in the past were just going oh this is kind of out, out of our reach now you know you're working with these big clients and so on so it was difficult to try and go all right now we're working with clients to try and bring it bring it back to the street again and take something away from advertising and kind of i suppose the over commercialization of something which has started on the street and then just going i need to kind of distance myself from it but kind of retain some of the exposure from it as well and that's that's really interesting because i've been in that kind of situation yeah. and what i found was that people on a street level suddenly think that you're like you said out of their reach so now the stuff that you love to do you're pretty much excluded from because people think that they can't afford you no more yeah that's right you know so did, did that happen to you oh yeah absolutely abso absolutely i mean like people who i would do like painting jobs for and bits of for illustration free. 
like I've made stuff for, for, for mates or putting stuff back into the community they're going oh now there's now there could be this like charge with it you know we're they going, don't even ask that's, nah, what's, that's what's wrong with it yeah. they don't even ask if you know they, they feel that you're now out of their well, reach this is, well this is it I suppose it's commercial success versus your own successes and your in like your own and your own ideas right. as well. So how did you get yourself back to basically being involved with the street? Just kept my head down, tried to tried to be a bit more picky about the work that I was doing, although you know it's all about trying to utilize the talents that you've got to make money. There's also the element of that which is going, well like am I selling am I selling out here, you know? So I suppose what I ended up doing from a commercial standpoint is going right I'm going to pick jobs where I can express myself, not express other people's ideas, you know, and, and this is where it comes back to, putting your heart in it, you do your best work when, we, when you're happy with what you're doing, sometimes you can desensitise yourself when you're working with clients, you know, so it's kind of going, right, well, let's kind of in, in, interject myself a little bit more into the mix and get more involved with what's going on around us and, and focus on the people who are there who are your mates and look after them you know together ape strong you know and it's like like as a collective we can achieve much more than that we can do as an individual and uh, any final words on Thank with the point. chicken jam and kicking <laughs> <laughs> oh man you had to pull a blade lyric on that one uh, we could um where can people find you you can find me on instagram the 1000 eyes